All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Shift uh, Cloud Summit uh, 2025. Super excited to be with Tim and Sarv. Uh, welcome to the Robert Show. It's your debut. I'm super excited to chat about what happened at Shift. We are towards the end of the conference. Uh, I've had a blast, to be honest. Uh, great customer conversations, great talks. Uh, I think uh, great vision as well that Commvault has. So super excited to be chatting with both of you. Just for audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Tell us more about what do you think about Shift? Any key takeaways? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having us. It's good to get a chance to talk with you. We're excited too. My name's Tim Zonka. I'm the Vice President of Portfolio Marketing here at Commvault. Uh, this is Sar Sarvnan. I'm the Chief Customer Officer at Commvault. Fantastic. And uh, I've been seeing all the great work that First of all, the customers have kind of, you know, come across, they've kind of shared about, you know, the joint partnerships that you all have in fireside chats and all the amazing things. Uh, what were your key takeaways in, uh, you know, the conversations that you've had with the enterprise leaders as well who have attended? I've seen massive crowd kind of coming in and all of them excited about all the sessions as well. So curious to know about that. I mean, the purpose of Shift is really for us to share with our customers and partners right. the shifts happening in the industry with respect to cyber resilience. Exactly. You know, how um, you know, traditional data protection is moving to the left to acquire more security capabilities. Mm. And the security space is also interested in making sure the right side is um, you know, well equipped to deal with uh, threats exactly. and more predictably and proactively. And the space is converging more and more. And it's really for us to share uh, where this is headed, and also to, you know, hearing feedback from the customers about what they see, mm. what kind of new challenges that they are uh, facing, uh, and we have had great conversations with customers through lunch as yep. well, you know, what their challenges and priorities are, and how they see their journey to cloud happening. Exactly. And, and particularly, you know, um, what's happening on the AI trend, for example. E yeah. It's, everyone is jumping onto it, and yeah. what kind of newer challenges they are facing. Uh, it's a great conversation. Love it. It's uh, just the great way to, you know, kind of get the community together to share and learn together. Uh, I'm also curious to know, uh, Tim, what do you think about such events? Uh, because it actually gets everyone together to share about the real things that are happening in this space. Like AI was one big topic that I've been hearing through all the sessions as well. What are your thoughts? I think throughout the course of the day, we have what we think and hope is a bunch of great content. So yes. like you mentioned, yep. speakers and fireside chats with customers, but I have to say my favorite thing to see is it was really tangible that everyone in the audience, customers, partners, Commvault employees, were on a joint mission mm. to improve resilience. And as Sarv said, you know, help this shift that our customers are going through. And one common thing I, I heard over and over again, especially uh, during the breaks at the networking sessions, or Sarv mentioned we had a lunch, is how the customers would say, hey, we're about to do what you just did, can we talk afterwards exactly. so we can learn from you? And exactly. that, to me, it, it constitutes success. And even the other enterprise leaders, the prospects, those who have been attending, even those who are not your customers, I've actually seen that excitement kind of coming out your where they've been listening to other friends who are enterprise leaders and actually working with Commvault. So I think that kind of also brings the community together, but then it also helps the larger enterprise community out there. Definitely. So that's pretty cool. I'm kind of also curious to know about, uh, you know, are traditional disaster recovery measures like RTO, RPO still relevant in today's era, or it has kind of moved away a little oh, bit? Yeah, they're, they're definitely still relevant. Yeah. I think that the, the big difference is, in most of the conversations that we have with our customers, is they're not sufficient uh, in light of all the rising cybercrime. Mm. So you still need to prepare for disasters, you yep. still need to be able to communicate about recovery time, objectives, and, and metrics like that. But when you can't trust the data after a cyber incident, that's no longer the only thing you, you can prepare for. Yeah. You need to have measures where, is the data clean enough? So not only do you need to be able to recover quickly, but you can't go so quickly that you actually expose even more risk. Mm. So this notion of making sure that the data that you're recovering is is free of compromise, free of threats, and still quickly recovered. It brings a new conversation, I think, exactly. to the some of the traditional disaster recovery scenarios, where really a lot of more of the cyber recovery practices yep. are important to remember as well. So, anything would you? Yeah, like I just want to add. Um, I think they are really relevant at the operational level, yeah. yep. not your, you know, right. But I think customers are more interested in the higher level outcome, <laughs> which True. is, you know, how quickly can I recover my business. And, and, and rebuild, right? I think, and that's where the more higher order business outcome to reduce the downtime of their business 
And that's why we started introducing this notion of uh, minimum viable company or continuous business. Yep. Right? I think that's, that attaches to really the business outcome, to stay in business. And that really is their resilience the customer is looking for. And, I can, and we had a lunchtime conversation on that too. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really, um, and the, the notion of minimum viable company uh, uh, is, you know, uh, customers are curious about. Exactly. Um, and they want to know more about it. And they want to, you know, one of our customers uh, uh, that we spoke to, a very close customer and partner as well. Yeah. They are well on their way to achieve that kind of a status, right? Mm. And they were sharing their learning and the kind of automation that they have to do uh, backup data protection that alone is not enough, but what are the you know, layers that you build on top to achieve that? I think that's you know one of the objectives of this shift event, introducing exactly. that notion of minimum viable company. Yeah, and that's resonating well with customers. I love it. Uh, thanks for sharing those. Uh, it's you know great insights. Uh, I'm kind of also curious to know since AI has kind of come into the game, how do you see the attackers kind of? Uh, you know, getting into the data in a different way. How, how do you kind of look at that? Well, I think as a technologist, we love to geek out on some of the more sophisticated AI-driven attacks. And so yeah. either, you know, you, it's, it's fun to talk about polymorphic attacks or shape-shifting attacks, but really, I think the, the big danger that AI brings from a, like a risk perspective is really straightforward is it, it helps write better emails. Mm. I mean, the social engineering that I think makes attacks so effective, being able to write more, uh, you know, like from a phishing and, uh, perspective, it's, it's straightforward, but it's really powerful and I think really increases the risk. Yeah, and so I think exactly. that's one of the things, as much as you want to talk about maybe some of the, the more uh, cutting edge stuff, I think it's as basic as that, that that you can't ignore. Yeah, exactly. It's just about the smallest thing, like email writing as well, yeah. and how you start believing. Uh, uh, sir? Yeah, I think um, um, it's a serious business now. Yeah, it's a serious <laughs> business, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, if I were to um, tell you, um, for example, uh, well, um, my peer Rajiv is responsible for the product, I'm equally interested in AI as mm. chief customer officer to transform experience for our customers. Yeah. Right? I think in my budget for next year, I have significant allocation for AI engineering team. Nice. And I call it experience engineering. Mm. You know, to really help our customers go through a friction-free journey from the time they start talking to us to you know, um, the, um, on uh, get onboarded onto Com. Exactly. Get consu you know, consuming our services, products, and then and the lifestyle cycle they go Very through important. and the experience behind it. Yeah. And then as they have problems, how do they, the kind of support that we're able to provide in product and outside as they talk to our people, how everything is delivered through an AI platform. Yeah. So that's the kind of. Uh, uh, you know, a serious business outcome that we hope to achieve. And not Love just it. for us, I mean, not just as our customers are all talking about the same thing as well. Exactly. Across industries, it's happening. It's very important. Uh, those are fantastic insights, sir. Tim, uh, one fun question for both of you. One thing that was an highlight for you all at Shift 2025. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> Tim. <laughs> um, the highlight for me is getting a chance to meet our customers. Yep. Uh, I love a microphone. I love the chance to get to talk on a stage. But um, I got to have lunch with uh, a bunch of customers in the hallways. I got to, to talk to a bunch of customers that I didn't know before. Yep. And that that's great. I think they are at the at kind of the edge of just the reality of how attacks impact an organization, yeah. and how an organization can better prepare for those. Yep. And so hearing the words that they use, hearing the challenges that they have, hearing frankly uh, about a lot more that's beyond the technology and just the dynamics of their teams and their people, I love it. Amazing. I, I think the most important thing for me uh, is, uh, is the learning that comes out of in a concentrated way talking to many customers at the same time. Yep. We had about four or five customers in my lunch table. And nice. the perspective that you know that you hear from them, mm. they cut across different industries. What are the industry priorities? What are the regulatory issues that they are dealing with? Very true. Where they need our, our help, for example, exactly. is how important cloud is. What you know, right? Is hybrid so uh, you know uh, is a thing for them? You know, so these sort of learning you know real time from the customers, helping shape our strategy, our future, our direction. It's very important through these kind of events. I love it. Uh, I totally agree. I could also see not only just the customers, but you all have AWS, GCP, Microsoft out there participating, you know, sponsoring the event, but also, you know, have their boots there, which is fantastic. Yeah, and that, that highlights the importance of the space, right? Yeah. 
exactly. know, and with more cloud adoption and more threats, yeah. and threat landscape is widening. Wide. And that's important for everyone, our partners, all of them that, that are listed here. Yeah. And uh, it's a common problem that we all face, and we have to come together to help our customers, mutual customers. I love it. Uh, okay, I promise this is the last one. <laughs> if folks want to reach out to you, learn more about the things that y'all are doing, which is the best social platform, maybe LinkedIn, X, where can they follow you? Oh, there is every day there is something getting posted from uh, Commalt on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a better source, and from there you will have all the links to go. On awesome. Wherever you want. <laughs> yeah. All right, the same for Tim as well, I'm pretty sure. Awesome. Uh, this was amazing conversation. Thanks for getting on the Ravit Show and sharing all the great insights. So we'll keep the conversation going. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you. everyone.